Shalom brothers and sisters and welcome to the fifth installment of the Messiah in the Old Testament. And if you haven't watched the first uh, four part series, please go watch it in the playlist entitled The Messiah in the Old Testament. I want to thank all of y'all for tuning in to this fifth installment brothers and sisters and we're going to conclude this series with part five. And you should have plenty of evidence against those who are saying that there is no Messiah to come. There is no prophesied Yahusha. And we should have plenty of evidence by now. And hopefully y'all been taking notes throughout these, this um, series to build up your own presentation to others who are asking these same questions or trying to say that there is no Messiah. So we're going to start right here in the book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 16. It says here, Therefore thus saith Yahweh, Alua, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Hallelujah. And let's go over to the apocalypse of um, Elijah. Now I'm still checking out this book. It seems credible. Some of the translations may be a little off, brothers and sisters. So uh, y'all bear with this book and its translations. That means research yourself and uh, check on the translations yourself. Okay, this Apocalypse of Elijah, page 20, verse 8, starting with verse 8. For this reason, Yah of esteem has been merciful. He sent his son to the world so that he might save us from this captive. Activity. He did not tell a messenger who came to us, or ark messenger, or any other power, but he changed himself. It's the Most High now. The Most High changed himself into human form, coming to us so that he might save us. Now, I'd like to mention one thing that. In 2013, some of you may have heard me say this in a past video, when, when that really hit me, I fell in love with the Most High for what he did by himself coming down and giving his life for his children like any father, good father would give their life for their children. So this is one of the things that really into my spirit from the most high and i that's when i i fell in love with him by understanding this thing but um the most high gave me that understanding i didn't come across this particular verse until um a couple of years ago anyway therefore be for him children he being for you a father. Remember that he has prepared for you thrones and crowns in Shamaim. For everyone who listens to me will receive the thrones and crowns among those belonging to me. Yahweh said, I will write my name on their forehead and I will seal their right hand. Now, some of you may have heard me say, uh, in 2012, when I did my first Sabbath day, on that night, Yahusha came and he wrote his name on my forehead, selling me, brothers and sisters. Uh, that's what happened when I did my first Sabbath day in 2012. And it was around the Feast of um, Tabernacles when I did it. But I didn't 
know it was the Feast of Tabernacles at that time because I was just waking up that we had to celebrate these things. So I only caught the ending of of the Feast of Tabernacles. No, no, I'll take that back. It was around the Memorial of Blowing of the Trumpets and the Day of Atonement. It was right before the Feast of Tabernacles. And when I understood that, that I had to do these feasts, I caught the ending or the, uh, I think four days, four or five days of the Feast of Tabernacles. And, uh, and I, and I started from there. But anyway, I didn't know what that meant at the time until I read in Revelations, uh, chapter three. And somewhere around, uh, I think 11 or maybe 16, uh, what he said, he'll write his name. Matter of fact, let me just go there real quickly. Okay, it's actually verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of Yah, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my Alua, and the name of the city of my Alua, which is in New Jerusalem. So, well, let me just finish reading. Which cometh down out of Shamaim from my Alua, and I will write upon him my new name. So, I didn't understand this until I actually got to this part later on, and I understood what took place that particular day. Anyway, let's go back to Apocalypse of Elijah. And I will seal their right hand. Now, this type of seal is the works flowing through your hands, your actions, brothers and sisters. That's what this here represents. But anyway, we are bearing witness that the Son is of the Father, directly of the Father, and is the Father, and of the Father. Y'all understand? Now, we are all from Him. We are created from Him and a part of him and we will all be his sons and daughters um, through Yahusha when everything is completed because the father is making a Sabbath day of rest where everything is prepared for all of us who have made it and all of us who were changed are going to be changed through Yahusha, we'll have our new spiritual bodies and we'll be reborn through him and in him, a new creature. No longer of the earth realm and the things that pertain to the earth, brothers and sisters. So there's going to be a change of things when that takes place at the end of all things. So let's go to Isaiah again. And again, we are proving the Messiah in the Old Testament. Old Testament writings. Brothers and sisters. And other books. 49. Isaiah 49 and 1. Listen, O owls, unto me, and hearken you people from, a, from far. Yahweh have called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother have he made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shout of his hand hath he hid me. He hid me. And made me a polished shaft. In his quiver hath he hid me. And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Yashara, in whom I will be esteemed. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Surely my judgment is with Yahweh, and my work with 
my Elua, and now with Yahweh that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Yahshua be not gathered, yet shall I be esteemed in the eyes of Yahweh. Y'all see that? It's talking about the Messiah now. Now, I've mentioned before that you'll see this dual thing going on between his servant, Yahshua, who became his son, his child, his firstborn, down here on earth. But he has a firstborn from above that had a work to do to bring us back to him. You'll see these dual things going on with the Messiah and with Yahshua, brothers and sisters. So... Uh, even though the Messiah is from of the Father, he is also of Yasharal. So what he receives, we will receive. That's why we read in the book of Daniel chapter 7 that he will have a kingdom and we will join him as kings in his kingdom. We also will be kings. Y'all see that? Whatever he is doing, we are doing with him. Brothers and sisters, get understanding. So you have some people not understanding this, and so they, they can't put it together. So they're just looking at Yahshua just being the only son, and uh, they're rolling with that. And now, say of Yahweh, that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Y'all see that? This one is coming to bring Jacob back to the Most High. Though Yahshua be not gathered, yet shall I be esteemed in the eyes of Yahweh, and my Alua shall be my strength. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. And he's been prophesied to bring us back to the Father. Because he's of the Father, come down from above and born into the tribe of your code to do this job specifically to bring his children back to him and to restore the preserved of Yahshua, the remnant. The Most High is preserving his remnant. I will also give thee for light to the nations that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Thus saith Yahweh, the Redeemer of Yahshua, and his set-apart one, to him whom man despiseth. Now we are also his set-apart one. We are also a light to the nations. You're going to see throughout the scriptures this dual thing happening with his firstborn from above, Yahusha and his firstborn from below, Yahshua. Together, they work together. But we need him to, to um, uh, live eternally with the Father. Y'all see that? To him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship because of Yahweh that is faithful, and the set apart one of Yahshua, and he shall choose thee. Thus saith Yahweh, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. So he came back to establish a new covenant for the people. That thou mayest say to the prisoners, Go forth to them that are in darkness, show thyselves that they shall feed in the ways and in their pastors shall be in the high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat uh, nor the sun Smite them, for he that had mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of the water shall he, he guide them. And, and I will make all my mountains away, and my highways shall be exalted. Hallelujah.
Now let's go to Second Chron Chronicles chapter 21. And verse 7 reads, How be it? Yahweh would not destroy the house of Dawid because of the covenant that he met, he had made with Dawid, and as he promised to give a light to him and to his sons forever. So this light was Yahusha, who was promised to come through the lineage of King Dawid and his sons forever, brothers and sisters which matches Bible prophecy, plain and simple. So let's go over to, um, uh, let's see, Isaiah 52. And let's read 13 through 15, and then we'll go into chapter 53. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many were astonished, astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told them shall they see. And that which they had not heard shall they consider. Chapter 53 and 1. Who have believed the report? And to whom is the arm of Yahweh revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness. And when he and we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. This is talking about the Messiah, brothers and sisters. This is what was going to happen to him and his description. Uh, let's see, where was I? He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of Yah, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and Yahweh have laid on him the inequity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. As, and as a sheep before the shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And this... Uh, go to Daniel chapter 9 verse verses uh, 27 through 29 I believe uh, where it gives an account of this particular part right here where it says where he was cut off and where it says he was cut off in the midst of the week that's talking about the Messiah when he was cut off in the middle of the week during the Passover and he was in the grave for three days and three nights right uh, but he was cut off in the middle of the week but anyway and he made his grave with the wicked and with the, re and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence neither was any deceit in his mouth verse 10 Yet it pleased Yahweh to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of Yahweh shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. And that's what took place 
and the records of Matthews through John and through the letters and acts in, in Hebrews in the New Testament, brothers and sisters. Now let's go to let's go over to Shepherd of Hermes. Now this here is another account, brothers and sisters. Even though this is of the um should be something of the New Testaments. Brothers and sisters, it is a lost book. Uh, please go read it yourself, The Shepherd of Hermes. And also read uh, The Testaments of Clements, brothers and sisters. Or, shall I say, The Epistles of Clements. Clements. You can find that in the Lost Books app, app brothers and sisters. And there's some testimonies of Yahusha in there as well and that testimony caters toward a New Testament book brothers and sisters but let's read this here and then we're going to get back into the uh, Old Testament writings so it says right here Barak are you as many as endured patiently the great tribulation that cometh, and as many as shall not deny their life. For Yahweh swear concerning his son that those who denied their master shall be rejected from their life. Even they that are now about to deny him in the coming days. But to those who denied him aforetime, to them, mercy was given of his great loving kindness. So this here is just another testimony here. So let's go back to um, Isaiah. We're going to read 55, 1 through 3. No, one through five. And then we're going to go over to Zechariah and then Proverbs. And then we're going to get into the testaments of the 12 patriarchs, brothers and sisters. We're going to read some scriptures from them. 55, Isaiah 55 and 1. Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that have no money, come ye buy and eat. Yeah, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which is satis that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me here, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of Deweed. Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that do not these shall run unto thee, because Yahweh thy Alua, and for the holy, I mean, and for the set apart one of Yasharal, for he have esteemed thee. And you can match this up with Daniel, which is written in Daniel chapter 9, I mean, Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, brothers and sisters. And we know the promises that was given to King David that him and his sons, the sons of David, would always be kings. And one would rise out of his lineage to reign and rule forever upon the throne of David, as promised. So let's go, let's go forward to Zechariah. Uh, no, let's go to Proverbs first. This is Proverbs chapter 8. 22 through 30. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way, 
before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. So this is just more evidence that uh, Yahusha was there in the beginning with the Most High. He was directly of the Most High. When he prepared the Shamains, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depths, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go forward to Zechariah. And again, we are covering the Messiah in the Old Testament, brothers and sisters. If you haven't seen the first five, first four, please go watch it. I have a playlist, brothers and sisters, entitled The Messiah in the Old Testament. Please go check them out. Hallelujah. And this is for your edification and correction. And for your notes as well, that you may prove all things for those who are telling you the Messiah didn't exist or he wasn't written about or he wasn't talked about. There's plenty of scriptures that speak about the Messiah in the Old Testament. So, please go back over these videos and write down the scriptures that you may provide them to someone else who doesn't know and doesn't understand or may be falling for the deception that he never existed or he wasn't written about in the Old Testament at all. All right, Zechariah chapter 6 verse 9 says, And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Take of them of the captivity, even of Helda, of Tobiah and Jediah, which are come from Babylon, and come thou this same day, and go into the house of Josiah the son of Zephaniah, then take silver and gold, and make crowns, and set them upon the head of Joshua, Yahshua, the son of Jehozadak the high priest. So we know that the first Joshua, Yash Yahusha, was uh the one who led uh Yahshua into the land of Canaan to take it over after Moses died. We know that he was representing he was a representative as a king and priest. Okay? He was as a king and priest taking over Moses' position. And Moses was as a king and a priest to Yahshua. All foreshadows of Yahusha, the Messiah, to come. And so here you have another foreshadow of another man named Yahusha at, at that time of Isaiah, who was to be, who was to, you know, have a crown put on his head and was also a priest. You see that it says, then take silver and gold and make crowns and set them upon the head of Yahusha, the son of uh, Hosedek, the high priest. You see that? Son of. So he was next to become high priest. Because he was the son of Josedek. And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh Yahweh of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch. Y'all see that? He had the same name. 
but he's a foreshadow of the real one to come in the future. And that's what this verse is talking about. The real one. Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of Yahweh. Even he shall build the temple of Yahweh, and he shall bear the esteem, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne. This is key right here. This particular one is going to be a king and a priest upon his throne. And the council of peace shall be between them both. Between, between the throne and the priesthood, brothers and sisters. And so, this one was told to put on a crown. The son of the high priest. Whose name was named Yahusha as well. As the first Yahusha who led us into the land of Canaan. And so he's a foresh he was a foreshadow of Hamashiach to return and lead us back into our land, brothers and sisters. So now that we're done with that, we're going to start going into the testament testimonies of the twelve patriarchs. And we're gonna Get a little testimony and evidence and record of the Messiah as well from them. Hallelujah. All right. This is from the testimony of Simeon. Brothers and sisters, one of the lost letters or testimonies of the 12 tribes, the sons of Jacob. Let's start right. Um, let's see. Where shall I start? Let's start up here. Verse 1. 6 and 1. See, I have told you everything so that I might be exonerated with regard to your sin. If you divest yourselves of envy and every hardness of heart, my bones will flourish as a rose in Yashabral and my flesh as a lily in Jacob. My order shall be like the order of Lebanon. Set apart one shall be multiplied from me forever and ever, and their branches shall extend to a great distance. Then the seed of Canaan will be destroyed, and there will be no posterity of Amalek. This is talking about in times right here. All the Cappadocians shall be destroyed, and all the Hittites shall be wholly obliterated. The land of Ham shall be wanton, and all that people shall perish. Then the whole earth shall be at rest from trouble, and everything under Shamaim shall be free from war. Then Shem shall be esteemed, because Yah, uh, because Yahweh, the master, the great one of Yasharal, will be manifested upon the earth as a man. Here's another scripture bearing witness to what we read in Apocalypse of Elijah, brothers and sisters. By himself will he save Adam. Hallelujah. It's direct testimony, brothers and sisters. It don't get no better than this. Let's read on. Then all the spirits of error shall be given over to being trampled underfoot, and men will have mercy we have mastery over the evil spirits then i shall arise in gladness and i shall barak the most high for his marvels and now my children be obedient to levi and to judah do not exalt yourselves above these two tribes because from them will arise the savior come from yahuwah y'all see that now we know that Joseph was of the seed of um, Judah, of the seed of King Dawid. Now, there's evidence that Mary 
was of the Le- uh, was of the lineage of Levi because uh, Elizabeth was her cousin. Now, y'all research this. This could be wrong. She could be of Judah as well. But um, from what we read in Matthew's or John, uh, Mary was the cousin of Elizabeth who and Elizabeth was of Levi. So you just pair that information with what's said here. Be obedient to Levi and to Judah. Do not exalt yourself above these two tribes because from them will arise the Savior come from Yahweh. And we know that this one was uh, Yahushua is supposed to be a king and a priest. Brothers and sisters. So, And we know that the son is determined by the seed of um, the father. But we know that um, the spirit of the Mosai overshadowed Mary and caused her to be impregnated, brothers and sisters. So uh, he is he is able, even if. Even if Mary was of Judah, he is able to make his son both king and priest and be of both lineages. He can do whatever he want. But anyway, y'all take that with a grain of salt. Research this on your own. And if it's not viable, then toss it out. All right, let's go to the next patriarch. But first, let's read this right here. For Yahweh will raise up from Levi someone as high priest and from Judah someone as king. Yah and man. He will save all the Gentile or nations and the tribe of Yasharal. This goes right along with Daniel's chapter 9, 7, verses 13 and 14, brothers and sisters. And uh, other scriptures written about uh, the Messiah shall be high priest and king together, brothers and sisters. So just put all this together, brothers and sisters, and uh, everything will unfold before your eyes. So let's continue on to the next patriarch, Levi. The Testament of Levi, 8 and 11. And they said to me, Levi, your posterity shall be divided into three offices as a sign of the esteem of Yahweh who is coming, or the master who is coming. The first lot shall be great. No other shall be greater than it. The second shall be in the priestly role, but the third shall be granted a new name, because from Judah a king will arise and shall find found a new priesthood in accord with the Gentile model of the people and for all nations. His presence is beloved. As a prophet of the Most High and descendant of Abraham, our father. So, as you can see, this new priesthood would be new after the order of Melchizedek, a king and a priest together, brothers and sisters. Let's drop down to 17, 9 through 11. Again, we're pulling out from the testimonies of. Um, the twelve patriarchs, brothers and sisters, to see what they had to say about the Messiah to come. And we're going to 17, 9 through 11. 9 through 11. Therefore they shall be in captivity and will be preyed upon. Both their land and their possessions shall be stolen. And in the fifth week, 
they shall return. Now this was when they went to Babylon. Their possessions in the land were stolen, right? And in the fifth week, they shall return to the land of their desolation and shall restore anew the house of Yahweh. So we know they rebuilt the temple for the Messiah. In the seventh week, there will come priests, idolaters, adulterers, money lovers, arrogant, lawless, voluptuaries, pederasts, those who practice bestiality. When vengeance will have come upon them from Yahweh, the priesthood will lapse. And then Yahweh will raise up a new priest to whom all the words of Yahweh will be revealed. He shall effect the judgment of truth over the earth for many days. And his star shall rise and shamayim like a king, kindling the light of knowledge as day is illumined by the sun. And he shall be extolled by the whole inhabited world. This one will shine forth like the sun in the earth. He shall take away all darkness from under Shamayin, and there shall be peace in all the earth. The, the Shamayin shall greatly rejoice in his days, and the earth shall be glad. The clouds will be filled with joy, and the knowledge of Yahweh will be poured out on the earth like the water of the seas, and the messengers of esteem of the Most High presence will be made glad by him. The Shemaim will be open, and from the temple of esteem set apartness will come upon him with a fatherly voice as from Abraham to Isaac. And we heard that voice when the father said he was well pleased in his son. And the esteem of the Most High shall burst forth, burst forth upon him, and the spirit of understanding and set apartness shall rest upon him in the water. And we know that when he came out of the waters, when John baptized him, the spirit of the Most High fell upon him as a dove. For he shall give the majesty of Yahweh to those who are his sons in truth forever, and there shall be no successor for him from generation to generation forever. So this one would always be king and priest forever. And in his priesthood the nations shall be multiplied in knowledge on the earth, and they shall be illumined by the grace of Yahweh. But Yahshuaah shall be diminished by her ignorance and darkened by her grief. In his priesthood sin shall cease, and lawless men shall rest from their evil deeds, and righteousness, righteous men shall find rest in him. And he shall open the gates of paradise. He shall remove the sword that has threatened since Adam. And he will grant to the saints or the elect to eat of the tree of life. And Baliar Hashatan shall be bound by him. And he shall grant to his children the authority to trample on wicked spirits. And Yahweh will rejoice in his children. He will be well pleased by his beloved ones forever. Then Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will rejoice, and I will be glad, and all the saints or elect uh, one shall be clothed in righteousness. And brothers and sisters, we are getting these testimonies from the patriarchs. Brothers and sisters, I suggest you read all the letters of the 12 patriarchs. You can download them uh, on my website. I'm going to Upload it to my website and make this document available for you to read and uh, check out the other documents under the reference tab. Uh, that's where the scriptures will be. Uh, and under the document tab is uh, documents that I'm personally sharing with you. So check that out as well, brothers and sisters. Okay, we're going to move along to the next patriarch. And we're going to bear witness of the Messiah written of in the testimonies, in the laws, in the statutes and commandments, and in the prophets of the Most High, brothers and sisters. All bearing witness that the Messiah did in Z, did, <laughs> did in, 
did indeed, <laughs> did indeed exist. <laughs> okay, let's move into the Testament of Judah. And again, we are bringing up evidence of the Messiah in the Old Testament in the Law, Statutes, Commandments, and Letters, and also in this, the Twelve Patriots, uh, Testimony, Testaments of the Twelve Patriots, brothers and sisters. And again, you can download this document on my website under the Reference tab, brothers and sisters. And I advise all of you to read all of it and digest it. And again, read also uh, the Shepherd of Hermes and the Epistle of Clements as well. Okay, right here, Testament Judah 22 and 2. My rule shall be terminated by men of alien race until the salvation of Yashara comes. Y'all see that? Until. So, these alien men started off uh, <clears throat> with Babylon. How was this rule terminated by them? When Babylon took the last king. Right? From King David's lineage. And that was it. And then it says, until the salvation of Yahshua comes. Until the coming of Yah, or the Elua of righteousness. So that Yaakov may enjoy tranquility and peace. And we know we don't have tranquility and peace right now. So we know that the salvation in and redemption is nigh, is coming. As well as all the nations. So, when we enjoy our Sabbath day of rest, which is coming, it will spill over to the other nations. That the earth may be at peace and at rest. Now, if they do cut up, oh, the Most High going to cut up on them and put them curses on them and put pestilence and famine on them. And uh, some of the nations, of course, they're going to be going into captivity and sold to the Sabians. So, yeah, we're still going to see all those things in our kingdom take place because they're prophesied. But Jacob, Jacob and his land going to enjoy tranquility and peace because the father will be finished with us and our land. That means there will be nothing unrighteous living amongst us or with us, brothers and sisters. They will be purged and cleansed as well right along with us to assist us and to be with us in our land. But the ones outside of our land, uh-uh. They got other things that's going to happen to them according to scriptures. Verse 3. He shall preserve the power of my kingdom forever. So this goes right along again with Daniel, was written in Daniel chapter nine seven, uh, chapter seven verse nine through fourteen, where the one who is from above and of the Father comes down to preserve, set up and preserve the power of the Most High's kingdom forever, with an oath. Yahweh swore to me that the rule would not cease for my posterity. Hallelujah. Y'all know this is talking about Yahusha. Let's drop down uh, 24, 1 through 6. It says, And after this there shall arise for you a star f uh, from Jacob in peace. And a man shall arise from my posterity like the son of righteousness. Now, whether they mistranslated this or not, I'm thinking it should say S-O-N. Um, 
but that we, we would have to research that ourselves. Okay, and a man shall arise from my posterity like the son of righteousness, walking with the sons of men in gentleness and righteousness, and in him will be found no sin. That ain't King David, y'all. That ain't him. And the heavens are Shamayim will be open upon him to pour out the spirit as a barak baraka of the set apart father or the kodesh father and he will pour the spirit of grace on you and you shall be sons in truth and you will walk in his first and final decrees you see that First and final decrees. The New Test, the Old Testament renewed. Right here. This is the branch of Yahweh the Most High. This is the fountain for the life of all humanity, of all Adam. Then he will illuminate the scepter of my kingdom. And from your root will arise the branch. He's talking to Judah. Because Judah has been given the kingship. Through King David. And from your root will arise the branch. And through it will arise the rod of righteousness for the nations. To judge and to save all that call on Yahuwah. Hallelujah. And again we are just proving. That yes. The Messiah was spoken of and written about. Brothers and sisters. This is the testimony of Naphtali. Chapter 4 verse 4 and 5. And it shall happen. That when they come. Into the land of their fathers, they will again neglect Yahweh and act impiously. And Yahweh will disperse them over the face of the whole earth until the mercy of Yahweh comes. A man who effects righteousness. You remember when the Most High said, I am a man of war. Well, through this one, he is. Okay. Until the mercy of Yahweh comes, a man who affects righteousness, and he will work mercy on all who are far and near. Y'all yeah, see that? Whether near or far. Remember when uh, Paul was saying that in his letters? Whether near or far. Hallelujah. In the 40th year of my life. Oh. I wanted to stop right there. Let's drop down to chapter 8. And we're going to read. 1 through 4. Oops. Here we go. Behold my children. I have shown you the last times. All things that will happen in, is, in Yasharal. Command your children that they be in unity with Levi and Judah. For through Judah will salvation arise for Yasharal. And in him will Yaakov be Baraka. A Barak. Through his kingly power, Yah will appear dwelling among men on the earth. Here's another scripture. Some more evidence. Yes. The Most High dwelt among us in the form of his son. Come down from Shamayin above to live amongst us. Born through the lineage of Judah through King David. As promised to reign and rule over the earth. And to bring us back to himself. 
for he gave us a bill of divorcement. But through his son, he's bringing us back to himself. Hallelujah. Start over again. Through his kingly power, Yahweh will appear, dwelling among men on the earth, to save the race of Yasharah, and to assemble the righteous from among the nations. Y'all see this twofold job here? To Yasharah first, then to the other nations. It has never been changed. If you watch my series, the house of Abraham, the house of Isaac, the house of Jacob, the house of Yahweh and Yahusha, you will see that from the very beginning of choosing Abraham, there was Gentile nations in his household when he made the covenant. And his father told Abraham, circumcise all the males in your house. And did Abraham stand up and say, I ain't circumcising them Gentiles. They ain't welcome in my house. No. They ain't, no, no, they ain't talking part of this covenant. Did he rebel against the father like you see those heathen Hebrews today? Non-believing Hebrews? No. He did what he was told instantly without even a thought of rebellion against the father. He didn't say, no, I'm going to only uh, uh, circumcise uh, my firstborn son. I ain't circumcising Ishmael or Eliezer or any other ones in my household. No, he was the head of his household. The father went to him and gave him instruction. And he did what that do. And all the rest of his household follow. From his wife to his children to the servants and handmaids to the ones that come freely to join themselves to us, brothers and sisters. Verse 4 If you achieve the good, my children, men and messengers will barack you, and Yah will be esteemed through you among the the nations the devil will flee from you wild animals will be afraid of you and the messengers will stand by you this will happen if you achieve the good children of the most high when I say children of Most High, whether I'm saying whether you are of Yashara or of the other nations, because in Him we will all be reborn, children of the Most High, in our final immortal form through the final lineage of Yahusha, no longer of Adamic lineage. Lineage, you'll be no longer of that flesh lineage. You're reborn a new thing. So put away that atomic mindset, flesh mindset, when you're thinking about the final kingdom of the Most High, when all flesh will be made spiritual. And those who are uh, going to live a mortal life with the Most High, You will be sons and daughters of his. This is the thing that he's making all brand new. It's no longer of Adam and what was on the earth before in the way that it was on earth. Now, when the kingdom of Yahusha comes, it's going to be part spiritual and part physical. So you're going to still have that physical order, brothers and sisters, that exists. Not that Yasharal is not going to still be the firstborn in, in the kingdom to come. 
but the other sons and daughters of the Most High will be just that, sons and daughters too. Why you think he says, or the Heavenly Father says, treat them as your brother. And also, he also says, you will inherit the other nations, which is your younger brother and your younger sisters. See, you are the firstborn. And those that accept the Messiah from the other nations are like the second and the third born. But you are the firstborn. But the Messiah is the firstborn from above. He's only begotten from directly of the Father himself. Brothers and sisters, whereas we were adopted into to be in his, married into him, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Let's go to the testament of Asher. 7 and verse 3. You will be scattered to the four corners of the earth. In the dispersion, you shall be regarded as worthless. Y'all see them doing that to us today. Oh, y'all, when, when have y'all Negroes ever made anything? Y'all not good for nothing but draining society. Y'all food stamp, y'all welfare, you're, you're draining society. They consider us worthless, like useless water, until such time as the Most High visit the earth. He shall come as a man. Y'all hear that? Eating and drinking with human beings. And as I said before in my past videos, the heathen stole our narrative which we knew before and, and perverted our narrative, brothers and sisters. They perverted our narrative. What was written to us was for, to us first. We knew the, these, the, the, these type of things first. They took what we had and took it for themselves and perverted it. Brothers and sisters. He shall come as a man eating and drinking with human beings or Adam. Crushing the dragon's head in the water. He will save Yasharal and all the nations. Yah speaking like a man. Y'all see that? This is the one prepared from the very beginning before anything was made. He was with the Father and of him. Y'all see that? Let's go on to Testament of Joseph. 19 and 11. And you, my children, honor Levi and Judah, because from them shall arise the salvation of Yahshirah. Hallelujah. And we know that Levi took the priesthood. Judah took the kingship. And through Judah, the two merged, the, the uh, priesthood and the kingship. Hallelujah. Let's go forward to Testament of Benjamin. 3, verses 7 and 8. And Jacob cried out, O noble child, you have crushed the inner feelings of Jacob, your father. He embraced them and kept kissing them for two hours, saying, In you will be fulfilled the uh, Shamaim prophecy, which says that the spotless one will be defiled by lawless men, and the sinless one will die for the sake of impious men. It's talking about the children of the Most High. 
dying for the children of the Most High and the other nations. The Son of the Most High shall die for the children of men, basically. Verse 4 and 1. See then, my children, what is the goal of the good man? Be imitators of him in his goodness because of his compassion, in order that you may wear crowns of esteem. For a good man does not have a blind eye, but he is merciful to all, even though they may be sinners. And even in persons plot against him for evil, de evil ends, by doing good this man conquers evil. Being watched over by Yah, he loves those who wrong him as he loves his own life. If anyone esteems himself, he holds no envy. If anyone becomes rich, he is not jealous. If anyone is brave, he praises him. He loves the moderate person. He shows mercy to the impoverished. To the ill, he shows compassion. He fears Yah. He loves the person who has the gift of a good spirit as he loves his own life. Hallelujah. It's talking about Hamashiach here. Let's fast forward to 9 and 2. But in your allotted place will be the temple of Yah, and the latter temple will exceed the former in esteem. The twelve tribes shall be gathered there in all the nations until such time as the Mosai shall send forth his salvation through the ministration of the unique prophet. And this is talking about Hamashiach. Through his ministration, his servitude, his mission. Hallelujah. Let's go down to 11. Read 2 through 5. And we're going to end it right there. And in the latter times there shall rise up the beloved of Yahweh from the lineage of Judah and Levi. One who does his good pleasure by his mouth. And again, when it says from the lineage of Judah and Levi, uh, Joseph's Joseph was part of King David's lineage. And uh, we know Mary was the cousin of Elizabeth, who was a Levite. So she possibly could have been a Levite. So that's probably what this is talking about right here, brothers and sisters. So do your own homework and research about that. Uh, most of us believe that Mary was also from Judah. But like I said, do your own homework and research and discovery on that one there. One who does his good pleasure by his mouth. Enlightening all the nations with new knowledge. The light of knowledge will mount up in Yasharal for her salvation. Seizing them like a wolf coming upon them. Gathering the tribes. Until the consummation of the ages. He shall be in the congregation of the, of the Gentiles, nations, people. And among the rulers. Like a musical air in the mouths of all. He shall be written of in uh, sacred books both his work and his word and he shall be Yah's chosen one forever he shall range widely among them like my father Jacob saying he shall fill up what was lacking of your tribe and that is it brothers and sisters You see, there is much evidence spoken of throughout the scriptures, the law, statutes, commandments, testimonies, prophets, brothers and sisters, psalms, 
letters. There's much evidence of the father having a son begotten of himself and sending him amongst men that a perfect one may die for our sins that we may be covered to come back to him in righteousness in purity being washed clean by his word made flesh by his salvation the most high salvation whom he prepared from the very beginning before anything was made that was made. He already prepared this one and hid him until the time came, brothers and sisters. Thank y'all for joining me on this quest to present much scripture that proves the Messiah in the Old Testament that you may be thoroughly furnished, edified, reproofed, and even rebuked in the instructions of the Most High throughout all his word and his work that he did through his people bring this word on the earth that it may be read and worked out in our lives so with that I'm going to say shalom brothers and sisters stay within this truth and fight for the truth and live in the truth <laughs>